god fuck bro uh, hey guys hey, what it do what it hey, do? <laughs> hey. Dude, we're literally so fucking back we're so back we're, we're so, so back back we're so back it's fucked up oh we're so back in we're the so stew back. bro we're back in the stew on some real and it feels so yeah we're back and i just want to before we like really dive in i want to thank all of the homies who came through these last couple weeks i oh mean the gosh, last couple yeah. episodes were definitely giving like friends and family like friends and family yeah like deep cuts <laughs> like deep no cuts like literally like if y'all came over like these are the people on my couch um and so I just want to thank everyone because I know y'all be listening to the pod too. I really want to thank you guys for pulling through like super last minute and just being down to like be on camera yeah. and like key Totally. Up. And yeah, no, like I am like so thankful for like everyone who came and like literally everything was so sudden and like it was just like this overnight change and yeah. yeah you guys like took it by the balls and like that's what we here for brody yeah we a team. like y'all literally said and sh and sh before before we because you know i'm gonna let you i'm like and you you know um just want to another shout out to sav who quite literally like like glued everything together because it was i mean obviously life is very unexpected and it was very sudden and like there was a lot of times when i was like bitch i can't even like i don't have time to do any yeah. of this stuff and sav who is not here in the stew with us today or else i would literally say this to her directly and if it looks a little <laughs> janky that's because no, Sav's not yeah here. if it's like, different guys it's because we're back on my camera because sav is sicky poo poo so i was like girl don't even like try to drop no shit off for real um but sav thank you for everything that you do like she without sav i like it would have been Cooked. almost impossible yeah to, like, keep it it would have been impossible like i yeah like sav does so much for us always mm -hmm. like not even yes this podcast like 130,000 mm percent -hmm. like she's like let me upgrade like her isn't it no yeah. she literally like, said she, let me upgrade yeah like she like took us to the next level for sure yeah but there's just in like day-to-day -day life too like sav's just like Incre everything yeah Ooh, gonna make me cry and cry you're count. allowed to cry <laughs> cry count <laughs> Guys, it's giving this episode's probably gonna give cry count. Um, and that's okay, bitch. Like I'm like, I should have got, got a little here. napkin. I know. I should have got a little you napkin. One? Um, I'm like, you can get one. No, it's okay. Okay. But um <laughs> The yeah, Divas. Get a okay. Get a hey guys, me like, hey guys, welcome back. We're so back. Did you know that we're so back? <laughs> Um, and to be fair, I'm like everything in perfect timing because Dom was like, girl, let's film. And I was like, girl, are you sure? Like yeah. what? Like I was like, okay, like I mean, you like, just got back. So I yeah. was like, okay, period. But then when we woke up this morning, Sav was sick and Sav was going to be who we had on. So I'm like, girl, and the so universe said, come say something. Out. I think like here and yeah, it's obviously it's only been a month, which for some you might be like, oh, wow. Like that's a long time to be gone. But like for me, like it's, it's not you know yeah but my like i get i will get emotional regardless like i feel like no matter like when i would have came back like yeah. i definitely would have like cried at some point so yeah it's either now two months from now three months from now like girl you're allowed to cry yeah but no like sav maya just like all my friends like They've just been so real, so I feel really thankful that, like, I have you guys in my life. Like, I know, like, you know, you guys watch the show and you're probably like, oh, like, they're so funny or, like, whatever. And, like, sometimes I feel like people think, like, oh, like, is it an act? Like, or are they really like this? <laughs> no, they don't think that one is. <laughs> I'm like, wait, who said that? I'm well, like, well oh, you oh. would... Well, that's something that I can't say on here. Well, yet. I'm just like, Sorry. some people are like not actually how they yeah, are. And I'm real, just like, real. you and Sav are like, and Quentin and everyone, like just every single person who's been on the show, like are actually like that. And you guys are just so loving and like, just really like the greatest friends in the whole entire world. So like, I feel thankful, but I also feel like we genuinely have like, the greatest like audience in the world and just the greatest community like genuinely because yeah like the dms the messages the comments like all of them have just meant so much to me and like everyone else who's like also lost like parents or like 
family or anything like that. Like that was just so special to like you guys like sharing that with me. And I know I wasn't able to like really message anyone back, but like just know I like saw all of it and like it just like means so much. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but I am so happy to be back and it's it feels like incredible to be back just because yeah it was like I loved like it was so fun being like just you know like part of the audience and like watching you guys sure, like sure. film and like come up with stuff but I was just every week I'm like oh I wish I was there like yeah for sure I mean for sure you totally. know and like obviously missed you fucking down it's so crazy because I literally was telling Dom like I if you're a bald and the beautiful listener as well, like Trixie's just coming back yeah. from her hiatus. I'm like, so am I? Just, no. I'm. And it's just so funny because I was watching their episode yesterday and like, you know, Trixie was just like, bitch, like, damn, I like, or they were just having a very, a moment of like, I really miss you here. And like, we're so lucky to do this. And it's, it's crazy that that happened at this time. Cause I literally called Dom and I was like, dude, I really fucking miss you. Like, yeah. And honestly, like from the friend standpoint, I guess I'm like, number one, bitch, you already know what it is. Like we yeah. got you, we're holding it down. And number two, I will say like, I do think it's been really like real and like eye opening. Oh my gosh. And if we both cry, that's so stupid. No, because it's so <laughs> stupid. I mean, like this is really the longest, like, and like, <laughs> no guys, because what did you think it was going to give? Like I'm coming back and I'm crying. I don't even know what I thought it was going to give. Like, like I it's so it is so emotional because like like specifically for us I think too like our friends are like everything like they are literally like the glue yeah, of our lives the heart and soul, you bro. know and so it's just like I think when you go through something like this when you go through like like genuinely what for me has been the hardest time of my life and mm -hmm. like you just see your friends like step up for you in a way that has just like never been done before like that's yeah. so fucking special that's so fucking special and like i mean i like it's just like i feel like i am so overwhelmed with like gratitude for that you know what i mean yeah totally i do and like i guess that's what i was gonna say is like even from kind of like a step removed like <laughs> It was just so insane. Not insane. Like, I guess this is what it's all for. You know, yeah. like, obviously, we're, like, through thick and thin, like, blood oath. But it's yeah. just really crazy to see, like, just even the way our community, like, embraced. Like, I'm talking about our friends and our community, obviously. But I'm just talking about our friends. Like, the way that they, like, embraced you and, like, yeah. the way that they, like, stepped up to help us here. Like, totally. that's going to make me cry, too. But I'm, like... It and, is crazy. Yeah. And the way you guys were like down with that, like you guys could have been like, okay, well, no. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, and real, because like I was thinking about the two, if I was in like your position, like I would be so scared to have to yeah. run the show by myself. Like I was, li I would literally be like, <sighs> okay, guys, so why is no, it here? But, but um, I mean, I think that's also just kind of like, I guess the back end that like chokes me up a little bit too is like, I. It's just crazy because you know that your friends are there, but then like to be in a really like physical, tangible situation, I mean like, okay, then I guess we're both crying, but like just to be in like a really tangible situation where it's like you genuinely need their support in a way that's physical. Like yeah. I, I also just don't like, and again, this is very removed, but I, I don't take for granted. And again, like a thank you to everybody who came through. Like I don't take for granted the idea that like you could take four weeks off and like yeah. somebody showed up every week yeah no like, that's exactly like, that like yeah that's just like it's just so rare and I'm so oh, thankful wow no I know and I know <laughs> like I didn't even I thought it was like oh like it'll be later in the episode where I start crying no like fucking right now of course no because it's, it's real it's real and like yeah exactly like I just feel so thankful like that time with family was so needed just because yeah. like um obviously if you guys didn't know um my dad passed away and it was super sudden and it was um in a car accident and again like just the, I share the details of that just because like I think when like you when someone's like sick or in like poor health like you can just kind of like anticipate mm -hmm. and like make peace with the fact that like eventually they're gonna go and I feel like since this was like so sudden and so tragic it's mm -hmm. been like which I'm there at all death is equally just as painful and like just as like, you know, 
it's all the same. I'm not saying like one situation is sadder than the other, but like, yeah, but um, it's definitely different. It's just different because that extra layer of like, you know, we had to like go fly out and like take care of like details and like just, there was just a lot of extra stuff that was like added Mm -hmm. onto our plate because of the nature of like how he died and stuff. And then it's just also like that, the nature of how he died, like was just like so hard for us but like thankfully like there's just like no suffering he's in a better place Mm -hmm. like you know and now like my family like I've just been in Arizona for the past month like Mm -hmm. just like helping my mom out and Mm -hmm. like you know my dad was like her everything like they were together for 30 years and like I don't know like even that I feel like I've had so much perspective like change like Mm -hmm. it's one of those things where you think you have like a good head on your shoulders you think you like know shit Mm -hmm. and then something like this happens you're like i don't know shit you don't know shit i don't know shit about shit about shit like and yeah so that's just been like a new process and i saw one of my friends last night and i was just like talking to him and like saying how like this like i feel like my life stopped but everyone's life like continued on yeah and that's just been like hard too because I feel like and it's like it's new for me it's new to like try and figure out like everything else you know mm-hmm. after someone's gone and yeah and I just really loved my dad like he was just like he was honestly such a good dude and then it's like I don't know like you you see your parents and you're like oh those are my fucking parents like whatever you know what I mean but like yeah I just saw like pictures of him when he was young um, he like recently went to a high school u- reunion and I met his friends from high school and they're like, oh yeah, your dad used to do this and do that. Oh. And like, it was just That's like, awesome. yeah, it was like cool seeing that, like how many lives he lived before he even like started a family and like, yeah, totally. I think that was really special too, because I was just like, damn, like, I don't know. Like it's just, it was just cool. Like, I feel like I just see him in an even more different light where like I have like I mean I've always loved my dad and like respected him and stuff but I have like a different kind of like love and respect for him now yeah but yeah it's it's definitely been just like the hardest time like ever and as expected you know like I know (laughs) I'm like water break water break me literally like yeah ASMR like you're crying no and yeah (laughs) No, and I'm like ASMR me drinking a bottled water like into the mic, but ASMR without you, I realized like you can literally hear me drink in like the fucking downtime. And I was like, guys, what the fuck? (laughs) Yeah, but yeah, it it has been like, you know, really hard and like, it's just like, it's tragic and it's hard. And like, if you've, it's such a very unique experience. And like, if you have it, I feel like also being younger too, like, yeah. You know, like, I feel like if I lost him, like, in my 40s or 50s, like, maybe I would, like, I don't know, like, that's a little more of, like, you know, I don't know. People's parents die at, like, different times, like. Yeah, totally. You know, but it just, it definitely feels very, like, damn, like, that's that's crazy um, that that happened and it was just very unexpected, so. Totally. With all of that being said, you know, obviously the way that I just have been coping this year is through like humor, do what you need to do. And like, I mean, Um, saying this on the record and off the record, like you don't owe me, us, like any time or capacity that you don't have. Yeah, no, for sure. But like, you know, I think the reason why I wanted to come back, like, as soon as possible, essentially, was because like, I missed this. I realized like what the podcast has added like to my life and what it means for me. And like, for me, it's something that I really do. Like when I think of like things that I live for, like I live, I genuinely like live for the podcast. Like Mm -hmm. I live for my friends, like, and yeah, like being here with you guys is so special. So thankful for this. And yeah, like, yeah, it's just fucking crazy. Like when someone dies, like there's so many details and I feel like you need like, specifically when so when your dad dies like i don't know about y'all's dads but my dad was like yes i do the cooking yes i do the cleaning like he was very like the (laughs) my dad like cooked cleaned washed everything drove my mom to work like literally did our homework with us like 
my mom was like, okay, girls. Well, she obviously, that's my fucking mom. Like she did so much for us too. But like my, like, I feel like some people were like, yeah, I've never seen my dad sweep. I've never seen my, I'm like, girl, <laughs> that man was sweeping, cooking, cleaning, like doing everything and like working full time. And like, they're just, you know, like doing their thing. But specifically, like if I need have a car insurance question, I'm like, oh, I need to call my dad. Or like, if I'm like, oh, the, my car says this, like, what does this mean? Like call my dad. And when shit happens, like you just call your dad and he died. And we were like, wait, fuck. And my dad was someone who was like, hey, you guys didn't know this just in case I die. Okay, mm. well, we didn't know shit because we didn't listen to him. And thankfully, the craziest and thankful part is like my dad wrote everything in his notes app. So we were like, he has this ginormous fucking like D-Day safe, like end of the world oh safe. Oh my God. And it's literally like do the cha-cha slide three <laughs> times in a row to like open it. And he, we were like, oh, we're fucked. Like we're going to have to get like a locksmith and it's going to take him like 10 days to open it. Yeah. And um, my, like he had the like thing left. So we, like he wrote it in his notes app, like, to the left now. Loving that. One step. Yeah. One step. Come on. So, yeah. Just stuff like that where I'm just like, even after, like, he really just like, you know, like, did his thing to like, take care of us. Like, just because, I don't know, he would always say that. I'm like, oh my God, shut the, shut up. We won't need it. Well, we did. Um, And yeah. And like, it's just, it's just so crazy. There's so many aspects to it. And I feel like just adding the car accident aspect for perspective, because um, he was going to his high school reunion just kind of when it happened and it was just like bad hurricane weather and stuff. So like, you know, the car didn't like do well with that. And um, anyways, I say all of this because like it's so crazy how like you meet the most like incredible people that like you would never think like you would be bonded with or like meet or like would change like your life. And then you also meet like the most like disgusting fucking like, hu like you just see humanity on like both ends of yeah. the spectrum. <clears throat> and I say that because I, my dad's car got towed after everything happened and the state trooper who like, f like was the one who like, was in charge of my dad's case. He was like there on the scene when everything happened. He is just like the best fucking guy in the whole entire world. Like genuinely, I'm like back the blue for like a sec because like <laughs> he like genuinely, because like I like, I don't know, like he could have really been so dismissive. Like he really could have just like not cared. Like he would have been like, oh, sorry that happened. No, but like the tow company who towed my dad's car, they like stole his gun. They stole his like personal belongings, his chains, like just so much of his Insane. stuff yeah. and then lied and said like they didn't and we literally caught them and I told like the state trooper and now they're like pressing charges and it's like a whole thing yeah. now yeah and I feel like so like he the state trooper could have been like oh well you know it happens all the time but like he's taking it so serious and like I just think that like it's just interesting how like I don't know. It's just interesting how like humanity has come together. Like mm -hmm. even friends like that I haven't talked to in like since high school or like junior high, but like knew my dad and like just that reconnection has been like super special. But I don't, and even like my family, like, of course I talk to my mom and sister like pretty frequently, but like even now more so, like I have like a deeper appreciation for like them, my friends, like everyone, like life has just had this like, shift for me um where I'm realizing how insanely grateful I am for everything you know mm -hmm. and just how how special it is that we get to have moments you know with yeah. people and yeah. have experiences with people and that sounds like okay like no but, but it's, it's, true. it's really true. It's, true it's like I feel not that I took my dad for granted in the sense that like I always thought he was going to be there yeah. And we do that. We do that with people all that. the time. Like taking things for granted is just like nature, you know, mm -hmm. cause like we live our own lives. But mm -hmm. like, I think this new perspective that I have is just realizing how really thankful I am for people mm -hmm. and like what I have, you know? Mm -hmm. And yeah, like being able to be away for a month and just like so many, like, you know, so many people don't get to do that. So I, I feel really thankful and it's been really hard, but 
I think that, you know, I'm excited to get back to this. I'm excited to just like kind of like rejoin society again a little bit. And yeah, yeah. like it's just it's new and it's different, but it feels really good. So happy to have you back. Man. No, hella. Like I told Maya I had to fucking mute her and Quentin because I was like, <laughs> y'all not my friends. <laughs> hanging out together <laughs> and i'm seeing it on my cell phone like you're not gonna disrespect me on my fucking cell phone like no when you're real like that's when crazy so i i yeah like i i missed everyone crazy like i was just like the stalker in the night like, no and we missed you too stalker in the night keeping up with the kardashians also with everything. keelan says hello too i forgot to tell you that before we started recording and keelan i love you this that past episode <laughs> No, I was like face over in the car and I was like, yeah, we're recording, like Dom's recording. He was like, oh my God, like tell her I said, I, I mean, we're all so about much. a key. We're all yeah, about a key. We're but all about to key crazy, but we're all about a key crazy, but no, it's, it's really good to have you back brother. Yeah. It's, on good, some real it's shit. good to be here as fuck. And like, <sighs> I fuck. miss you guys crazy. Like I'm, I'm ready, but yeah, it's just, it's been a new, yeah, some new shit. I'm, I'm on some new shit. I mean, so. I land the plane the same every way. It's like, obviously like. I, I haven't had an experience like that, but I do know that with everything, like it's ever flowing. And if you ever feel any type of way, like you're just like, bro, I can't do it this week. Like, you know, we got you. And yeah, like, no, of course. And like, I think like what I've been learning and of course it's different for everyone is like, it's nice to have like something consistent that like totally. you just like do. And I feel like in Arizona, I kind of had some habit and routines that like every day, like I was like accountable for. Mm -hmm. And that goes with like anything, anytime you're going through a hard time, like period, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's really nice to set yourself up to be accountable for things mm -hmm. because I get it. Like, you know, and that's one, that's how I'm coping personally. People cope differently. Like they just want to lay in bed for like hours and hours yeah. and I'll for sure have that too. But like, I think like for me, I, I hadn't watched TV for a month, y'all. A fucking month. A whole entire goddamn Which month. Which I literally was like, how is that even... How is that even possible? It's impossible. It's only possible through God, I guess. I don't fucking know or whatever. <laughs> but like dead ass, like I hadn't watched TV in a month. So I was like, on, like, like wasn't really on TikTok like that. Like um, people were... A little bit. I was a little bit, but Oh no 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 no. I wasn't oh. saying I just thought about something else and I was like, um, I need to remember to say that later. But like they're like I'm I'm seeing like secondhand like trends and stuff. And Hell I'm like, like, oh my fucking god, like I'm clocked out crazy. Yeah. And um, but bruh, with not watching TV for a month, I was really going through it. And like as soon as the plane landed in Los Angeles, like I hung out with Sav and we like watched Love is Blind. Thank you, fucking Jesus Christ on God's green earth. earth yes. That like y'all created reality TV because genuinely TV is one of the greatest things to ever happen on this fucking earth. And I know some people are like, you know, YouTube babies and shit. So they don't believe in like TV and stuff. But <laughs> I no, it's true. It's true. I think that like there's some people who watch YouTube and then there's people who watch TV. Okay. Like... I'm just telling you. Like, okay, so like what? Okay, that's <laughs> like fine. What? You're allowed to watch YouTube. But like, I personally like am, am am classic, and I like TV is yeah, like real. hours of TV. Like I live so I can go home, lay in bed, and literally watch like three hours of some bullshit. No, for sure. Um, so I'm so f oh my god, like I can't even tell you what watching TV for two days straight, like not even taking a breath to just enjoy god's finest creation reality tv and enjoy this in, well enjoy is questionable enjoy is questionable this, um, season, this yes. season of love is blind and oh my god yeah there's anyways they said i heard some i think faith told me i don't know who told me but somebody told me that dc literally has like the worst dating like statistically yeah. like they're like the second worst city to date in i believe that and too. i see it and i believe yeah <laughs> and also like everyone there like works for like the government like it's hella for real like the only jobs you can get are like for the pentagon like the like they're just like so not doing? fucking serious what though? are y'all doing out there like i don't even understand like what dc that's going on in dc like i have a friend her dad works for the pentagon and he like commutes though 
Like, I think a lot of people commute, which is why, like, mm. that show is so interesting because, like, Marissa was commuting from Baltimore. Right, um, right. Garrett lived in front. Also, Garrett? His new tea? Bumping that. His new what? Did you see his new toupee, girl? No. Girl, oh, on what? the reunion? <laughs> on the reunion? Girl, he got, he got bad. And here's the thing. Not he got bad. <laughs> okay, but here's the thing, though, because I think nobody wants to talk about it. It's like, if you're somebody who dates white men, no judgment. Like the McDonald's hair. Oh my God. God. Oh he shit. Got, he got that. He looks good. No, bitch. he like. He, Whoa, the grow out. Bitch, he grew out his oh. hair. He got into fashion. And now oh he's. Oh my God, he's mad. No, now. Taylor, Taylor. And that's Wait, the thing. Wait, bumping that. That's the thing. That's the thing. That's the thing. That's oh the thing. Oh my God, he's back. No, now. and Taylor literally goes. Um, she was like, I, I saw the vision. Just no, know you I saw see, the vision. Mama, grow that shit. Okay, because what I was going to say was, unfortunately, if you're somebody who dates men of not POC behavior, like, I'm... Uh, and do y'all mind if I'm a male advocate real quick? I feel like the one of the saddest things that we've done for men genuinely is, like, demonize the receding hairline because anyone who's not melanated and even some kings with the melatonin, like y'all are gonna get the mcdonald's hairline it's yeah. inevitable it's inevitable it's inevitable it's inevitable and here's the thing here's the thing we get micro links extensions like we do our thing all the time mm -hmm. like girls literally put like full fucking wigs <laughs> on and shit and like we wear concealer like i'm just saying like y'all drag us for it you're like y'all fake y'all fake if my man had a fucking toupee i would literally be like thank you no i'd be like because like, i have okay also let's stop saying or not saying that like a hat is also a toupee a hat is also a toupee and <laughs> if you're a motherfucker who literally wears a hat every day mama that's a toupee that's a bang i can say that's that as somebody with a bang that's a bang and here's the thing too i'm like y'all like just like just do you like just do because you. also because also here's the thing too <laughs> if you're balding just balled out like just balled out bitch. just balled out because it's honestly gonna look so much better like it's so much weirder when guys try and like keep that little patch of hair and then like it's just kind of like hanging on for dear life and you're like let that let that shit go well, man and see that's the thing though is i feel like as a society though we need to, and guys i'm talking to y'all we need to like come together though to like genuinely it would be i would argue that it's the same as like when men were like oh don't wear makeup yeah like don't wear makeup girls would probably feel much more comfortable not wearing makeup if everybody was like, hooray, she's not wearing makeup. Like bitches literally be like, nah, I like them natural, whatever. Like they That's don't have like literally, like I, like I, cause it's me too. Like I'm not walking out with like a little skin tint, little eyebrow gel combo. Like, no, it's like, and that's the thing too, is like men say that like, it literally happened on the show. We're like uh, Steven and Monica, which, which well, girl, mama. hold on. Anyways, um, he like, you know, Monica, gorgeous fuck. She literally didn't have makeup on. And she's like, do I look pretty without makeup? And he was like, I honestly didn't notice. Right there. Caught you jolly red motherfucking and, hand. If men are going to be like, yes, girls, come outside. Don't wear makeup. We love you natural. Y'all need to understand what that means. And when we step out into the light, you need to be like, huzzah. You know, huzzah, yeah. same thing with the receding hairline. I'm like, it's really unfortunate that we've made something that's so like honestly inevitable for dead ass, like 80% of men. T like that happens that we've made it like boo ew sucky sucky gross like that's so nasty nasty yeah. when it's like guys i just like here's the thing <laughs> once it starts going i'm like just, just let, let that go. man go but let that shit go but that's what i'm saying we can't act like we can't act like when men come out with their hairline receding that we'd be like yes let it go we'd be like oh my god bitch oh my he needs to go to turkey like we do that <laughs> okay no, no 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 like people do that for show <laughs> I am like, well, because I've dated someone who's bald before. <laughs> I've dated bald people before. No, you date bald people. And like, here's the thing. <laughs> like the bald and the beautiful. And the beautiful. <laughs> like, get hello, with it. Hello. But like, I don't like for me personally, like I don't like see someone who has like a receding hairline or like, actually, correction. I don't see someone who's bald and like think like, oh, fucking bald ass bitch. Like, well, yeah, but that's different. But I see like, I 
think it what to me is worse is them trying to hold on to the glory well yeah but that's like the thing when, though is there's an in-between baby it's that but ba 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 hairline okay, if it's receding it's Reseda. like if it's Reseda, like garrett's was Reseda. like, like garrett's was Reseda. harry and, styles was Reseda. and like, i was just like okay okay it's Reseda. but not yet not enough to like his hair was still enough that like he can now hide it through the sides. Yeah, but see, that's what I'm saying. Like, are we gonna commit to but, the Reseda like, or not? He doesn't have to. He could have <laughs> stayed not Reseda, and I still would have fucked with him because that's a good man. And <laughs> that's a good man, Savannah. But also, but also, here's the thing: it's not. There's a line where I'm like, if it was back here, <laughs> or there's just like huge patches, like just gone. I'm like. I would maybe look in. No, and like figure it out. I would like maybe look into just like taking it all off. <laughs> and, and hey, I hate to buy into, you know, I hate to um, perpetuate something that I just said that we could actively try to not do, but he does look good now. He looks, he looks fantastic bad. because that's what I was saying. I was like, he either needs to commit to like the bald taper like fade like he needs to get a fade and like bleach it or something or like bleach and tone it or he needs to literally do something because he could cook no and for sure and i only gasped because i was like and when they when love is blind is brave enough to come step on los angeles fucking territory mama sita no oh that shit because we're low-key their age <gasps> oh no 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 uh hannah which okay which girl y'all, you shouldn't be on now no no shade i don't think that we should be allowed like i think the cap should be like 27 youngest but that's just me well here's i'll be 27 next year like here's the thing i know get sick oh fuck no hannah and i are the same age she's 26 which i'm just like here's the thing she was our gen z representation (sighs) and i'm just like that's gen z on that fucking show because here's the thing here's the thing what leah was for others is what Hannah is for me. Mm. I see her. Mm. I clock her tea. Mm. And like, yeah, her That's delivery brave. was poor in air, like areas, but that kid was no saint. And yeah, I don't know. Like people literally thought he was like, I don't know. Y'all can send me death threats, like whatever. <laughs> but like, I just like, whatever. Like, I don't know. Y'all be hating on her. And like, yeah, there was like moments where she was mean and like, whatever. But I will say she was unapologetically herself boots. And we can't say that for some. And that's fair. That's all. I'm like, and I don't know what I thought we were going to talk about today, but I didn't think it was going to be hairlines. Like literally, no, it wasn't. I wasn't planning on hairlines either. But I ha- I have some things on my docket. That's fine. But I'm also like, you know, what else? No, bring up the things on your docket. I I don't even really have anything on my docket, really. Okay, well, you already know what it is. Like chime in when you do, type shit. Yeah. But I just wanted to say on on um on this platform that I deleted TikTok. Okay. This came in this came in a slew of things. Number one being trigger warning. Number one being went and saw the Chromacopia listening party, or should I say listen to? Yeah, that's when I blocked them. No, like trigger warning. And I'm sorry, because obviously I was like, we would have turned up. We would have turned up. And we know this. And we yeah, know this. No, and like okay. we, and don't your worry. friends spit in your face, <laughs> call you stupid, <laughs> spank you on your ass, and send you cold and shivering outside. <laughs> Not cold and shivering. No. Like, oh, okay. Hey, no. no, she said no. Um, I'm not allowed no, to feel no. No, no. I mean, listen. No, that you would have done it too for a check. You would have done it too for a check. I would have done it too for a check. And like, just know that I was thinking about you, like genuinely. I'm not even just saying that. Like, I literally was like, oh, we would have turned up. Also, guys, someday we're gonna not record when there's literally like BBL lawn work, 360 on the lawn. Like, we always end up here on a Wednesday every single time. Like, it's not street sweeping and a fucking BBL. But here's the thing, too. I it's random, is it? Like, it's they, oh, they love me coming, I guess. <laughs> no, but that's what I mean. Like, they come no rhyme, no reason. That's so weird. Well, they love coming when I'm here. Um. <clears throat> anyway, went to the Chromacopia listening party, which number one T, number two, there everybody there was 19 years old. Number three, um, oh my god, wait, there were some divas there. There were some divas there, there were some neighbors there, girly. <laughs> there were some neighbors there. Hey guys. Um, shout out my squirrels. Um, and I'm very grateful that y'all were there because again, like I'm like, wait, yes, like let's go. The right bitches, you know let's what I'm saying? Go. Like, love them. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. But obviously was amazing whatever genuinely came out of that shit like low-key manic and i'm not saying that like on some like oh like oh my god i'm ocd like what are i genuinely mean like i came out of that bitch like 
I went home and I journaled for two hours straight. Like I, I literally felt like, I think I just realized after that, that like I've low key been like high functioning depression kind of like I genuinely came out of that and was like, Oh my God, like I'm so inspired. I'm literally an artist. Like I don't know what I've been doing. Like I've been so just like not very disconnected these last couple months. So I literally came out that bitch like, I'm doing juggling. Like, I was yeah. like <laughs> hey, hey, hey yeah. let's go. Um, but anyways, one of those things, like literally in the middle of the fucking show, I was like, I have to delete TikTok. Like, I just have to do it. And y'all know, if you know me, like I've, li- I'll make that joke, but I've never once been like, I'm really going to delete t- like TikTok. Like I'd be like, no, I need her. Like, you know, like no shade. Mama, I deleted TikTok four days ago. I hate to say this. I literally hate to say it. It has drastically changed my quality of life. Like, and what's fucked up is when I first deleted it, I've literally, and I've been counting, I opened maps seven times in the past three days, just off of like, like muscle memory of opening TikTok. And now like maps is where TikTok used to be. And I keep opening maps and being like, where am I going? Like literally where am I going? But also like genuinely dude, my days feel like so much longer. Mm-hmm. Like I'm just realizing like, I always felt like so rushed. Like I always felt like, oh my God, I have like no time. Like whatever, I just have like these little pockets of time. And I'm like, mama, maybe it's because every like 15 minutes of downtime I had, I was like cramming in like <clears throat> like 60 different videos with different opinions, different things, like different things for my brain to like, like just process and like see and understand. And then I would just keep it pushing. And I'm literally like, it genuinely feels like I'm quitting. So what I imagine like quitting cigarettes feels like, cause the dopamine hit, like I literally be like, um, yeah. <laughs> what I boo, yeah. like what I boo, what I boo, <laughs> what I do. <laughs> but I will say like, I genuinely feel like my days have been so much slower. Like I feel like I have enough time in the day, which is fucking insane. I haven't felt like that in years, honestly. And like, Every, like, I feel less anxious. Like, I feel like it's just my thoughts. Like, I'm not hearing, like, 70... I was talking to Quentin about it because we deleted it at the same time on some, like, accountability buddy shit. <laughs> Quentin was like, honestly, like, not hearing six different, like, tarot readings is game-changing. Like, it genuinely... I'm literally like, oh, my God. Like, I'm so back. Yeah. I feel very, very back. And I feel very present. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing, too. Like... I wasn't on TikTok either, like, during this, like, time. Like, Mm -hmm. I wasn't on TikTok for, like, the month, pretty much. Like, I had, like, yeah. And then you just realize, like, holy fuck. Like, the amount of shit that I accomplished when I was home was, like, asinine. Like Yeah, and you were doing your thing. Like, we, like, there was so much shit, whatever. And, like, I just, I think, like, yeah, it just kind of goes back to the fact that, like, Obviously, everything in like um, moderate. <laughs> Me not even knowing the word. Uh, no, like moderation. In, um, no, you got it. <laughs> mo- uh, what's that word again? <laughs> you got it. Uh, you got it. Moderation, but like it is true. Like you know, I think like sometimes when you like step away from something, that's like a huge that has like a huge foot in your life, mm-hmm. and you kind of like remove it. It's you just realize like oh, there's like another way to live. Yeah, and. Also, I will say like on that point, it's like, you know, anybody who's, you know, stuck in the TikTok of it all or whatever, like, I feel like I I got to a point where I was realizing I was just getting like these quick, like everything's like a quick dopamine fix, like need like this, like need a ha ha ha, like ha ha, like whatever, like whatever. But I, I, I think that we also have to remember as a society though, that like TikTok is also like genuinely made to keep us there. Like they literally everything is programmed to keep us watching, like keep us like, you know, consuming, like keep us whatever. And so let that, I'm like, (laughs) literally me with the lantern. I'm like, and let's not even fucking forget that they tour because I, it's in, yes, I know that we're on our phones. Yes. I know that we're so online. Yes. Ha ha ha. It's actually like tripping. If anything, it's like proving to me why I need to stay off of TikTok. How like genuinely like in my brain that shit is like, why the fuck? <laughs> Why the fuck am I opening maps? <laughs> Why is it muscle oh, yeah. memory for, to open TikTok? Yeah, for me, when I would like do like social media cleanses, I would always open Pinterest. Because that's that's dead ass like where that should be having you opening Pinterest just like vibes. No, <laughs> just hella like what and you know, I still got I still got tube, you know what I mean? I still got YouTube and shit, but like obviously I was literally watching YouTube and on TikTok. Like it's just crazy. Like I'm like, I be watching like 
an hour long podcast now, like, <sighs> like literally. And it's, it's, it's sick. It's sick. I mean, I'm only day four, so I'm, I'm genuinely like in kind of like a withdrawal era, but like, I, I wish I was lying, bro. Y'all know, I wish I was wrong about this. No, and that's just real too, because <laughs> I remember like, uh, I, there was like a few days where I got to like get on TikTok when I was home and my mom and I dead ass sat for like two hours. She was just watching my phone screen and we were like, the rot. <laughs> no, literally. But, like, but no, it's real as fuck. And like, even now, like, since I haven't been watching TikTok, like, this is my tea is like, since I haven't been watching TikTok like that, I literally just wake up. Like that's the real tea because before I used to literally scroll for two hours on TikTok. Now I just hella wake up and go, go. So I, it's, it's crazy because yeah, I literally just like wake up and like this morning, usually, well, it's street sweeping and usually I don't move my car. I'm like, F y'all. But because I got TikToks to watch. But this morning I literally walked up, had to walk around the fucking block. Oh, I love that. Um, and stuff. But I was like, damn, this is nice. Like, you know, like I just like got up and like ordered some good. Like I just did my shit and it's, it's been really good for me. It's been really nice to like not yeah. do that. But, you know, again, like no shade or tea at all. No, it's just literally like it genuinely has just impacted at least my four day to days so much that I was like, guys, I have to, I, I just have to get on here and like spill my sermon. And I'm not saying that you have to do that, but like, it's just tea. know that there's like a whole, like I, I genuinely, I genuinely feel like the most grounded I've felt in a really, really long time. I mean, that could also be, you know, the chromacopia fucking like take this red pill. And I yeah. also was like, <gasps> like what's up? But it's it's actually it's it's really fucking gaggy and i also think like you know i'm realizing how much of for example we're going to go to this party tonight maybe probably if yeah. we go to this party tonight like no tiktok literally got me and quentin like we're leaving our phones at home on some just like what am i even like all i need is a digi camera and my bros and my apparently I'm about to start literally if I make t if I don't have TikTok for a month, I'm going to stop wearing shoes. Like I'm literally about to be like San Diego, like fuck it, like no shoes on my shit because it's just like, I don't know. I don't not too much on this. We can move on to something else. But I just know that I have a dissertation cooking of like just I'm really decolonizing my brain as a consumer right now. And I'm just like half the time what the fuck am I even taking pictures and videos for why can't what happened to just like having an experience yeah. and like remembering it as a memory and even as I say that I'm like it doesn't feel like enough though like it literally feels like just with the way that we're connected to like the internet and shit like I'd be feeling like if I didn't take a picture at this party then it didn't happen mm. spooky ooky, spooky like ooky spooky happy Halloween type shit like I'm like but that's that's I mean that's the truth you know what I mean yeah and yeah my I, truth my truth my yeah truth. your truth too and like also yeah I think like there's a fine like it's it's a line you know of of being like and it's yeah it's just everything in moderation too because it's just yeah sometimes it's too much like you know I have friends who I absolutely jadora um <laughs> like jadora like, like jadora but. I'm literally like, if you don't get that camera out my fucking face, like on some Justin Bieber shit, like it, it's just because like sometimes it really is too much. It's like, too much. Sometimes I'm like, damn, can we just like talk about like be being for real right now? And yeah. like no shade, no tea, but like, and hey, I'm literally a fucking content creator. So like, yeah, I have like, you know. Your own I've, relationship, your own vibe. Yeah, like, and totally. like whatever. And like, I and I completely understand and stuff. But yeah, I feel like even that too, like it, it's just one of those things that's been kind of like on my brain a lot too. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Like it's just, it's just one of those things. It's like hard when you like rely on like a well, media yeah. platform and for stuff. For sure, for sure. Um, and yeah, it's really hard because I will say like, even though I do do a lot, you know, like post a lot, film a lot at times, not too much this year, but like in other years, mm -hmm. I definitely realize that I am more like disconnected than like other people. Like I went to this event and, you know, there was a celebrity there and I got a video of them like just walking into the event and, you know, they're iconic, whatever. Um, and so, yeah, like. I guess like someone had seen me take that video mm -hmm. and they were like, can you airdrop that to me? Like so they could post it. 
Like hmm. they wanted that video so they could like post it themselves. And they were like, I just like wasn't able to get a good like video. And like, I just want to like post that like. And when they said that to me, I was like, yeah, like you can have it. But like, that's fucking crazy. Like, yeah, like I just mean, yeah. to say that, like you were in the room, like. And that's what I like. And that's ugh. what I mean. Like you can like be like, oh, we were posted up, like whatever. And but also like you had to see when like X, Y, Z, like, you know, and I and, and it's just giving like the fucking Spider-Man meme because like I took a video of them, but it's just like yeah. the fact that like if I didn't get a video of them, well, it's not I'm not going to fiend experience. for one. Yeah, it's not like authentic to literally be. And that's, I mean, obviously at the end of the day, I can tie this whole fucking conversation back to capitalism, obviously, because it's like, you know, people's livelihoods, blah, 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 like whatever, our validation fucking more, like our validation, what's the word, like a... Uh, rubric is not the word I'm looking for, but that's the best I can think of is hella different now these days, you know, as Gen Z and Gen Alpha. But like at the end of the day, it's kind of just giving like, yeah, how authentic are we trying to be? How authentic are we trying to be? (laughs) And also like, I get it. Like, also, like, people's jobs are to make you feel FOMO, essentially, to make you feel like mm. you're missing out, to make you feel like if you don't, if your room doesn't look like this, Which if your is house capitalism. doesn't look- Yeah, no, for sure. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. And, like, I don't know. It, it's interesting. I have, like, a lot of thoughts and, like, reworkings and shit. But, like, I would just say out of someone who's, like, you know, like, I rewear shit. Like, I know people who literally buy a new outfit, like oh, I already posted in that. I'm not wearing it again. Like I, ha- I've known people in the past when I like first started who were like, oh yeah, you can have that. I already like posted in it. Just shit like that where I'm like, listen, like I'm not saying like I'm a fucking saint and I'm like different from these people, but like in ways like, yes, like there, like I think that like there's a little bit of a morality where I'm yeah. just like, bro, like, how like for real are you trying to be or like if you're just like posted up with someone at a coffee shop and like they need a photo of the fucking coffee like i'm just like bro i just fucking met you like no hella. you don't want a fucking key hella. just us for like the first time and get it i i post pictures of coffee with people all the time but like sometimes i just want a fucking key with you and i feel like that is the, been the nice thing about what the podcast has like added to my career is just it's given me an outlet to not be so reliant on what social media is. Yeah. I feel like <clears throat> I've um just really fell out of love with the idea of having to just constantly like, oh, okay, like I, you know, I was a life I am a lifestyle content creator. But like it's yeah, it's been this year has been especially tough for me in general. Like I feel like what you were saying, that kind of in autopilot yeah vibe um just because i don't know it is very like soul sucking to be like oh, okay and, i don't know and it's yeah. not and i'm not shading anyone who does it i really do love it i love the opportunities it's brought me it's literally yeah, like for sure given me like the tools to do this and stuff but i just think that like after the kind of year that i have i'm just realizing like the like if you don't have to be on social media like you're extremely blessed is all for sure. And I, I definitely think as somebody, you know, who's kind of on the other side of it, hasn't been onto it, is getting into it, I guess, because of now and here. It's like, I would also argue that this is a bigger cultural shift. Like, there's yeah. just so much shit happening in the world right now that, like, I kind of don't really give a fuck about five people posting the same format. Like, I'll say it, I guess. But, like, you know, I just, I, it's hard for me to, like, connect to, like, the same format of video, the same smile from six different people about like what boots I should be wearing in fall. I'm like, bitch, I'm lucky that I even can like go outside and like walk around my neighborhood. Yeah. And like, I'm lucky that I can sit here with my fucking Brody bro bro and like just talk into a mic. Like it's just like a different, you know, everybody has like a different view of things, but I do think there's also going to be like, and kind of is a larger like shift away from stuff like that. I'm thinking and seeing potentially Obviously, I think social media is always going to be a thing. Like, we're hella keyed up and stuff. But, like, you know, I feel like there's a reason why, like, girlies are coming out the cuts just being, like, hella fucking grilled. Everyone's like, wait. Yeah. Wait, what'd you say? Hey, what'd you say? What'd you say? Because I'm, like, eventually hearing, like, six things you need to get from Amazon five times and I literally am barely paying my rent. I'm like. 
yeah, what the that, fuck? That, that, that's what I mean. Like, that's what I mean. Like, I feel like I definitely flow more with like the sustainability girlies and just like just taking up that kind of space on the Internet and like, you know, like whatever. Like, I just I feel I see it. Mm hmm. And I feel like throughout my career, like if you kind of like just look through, you know, when I started in 2020 to now, like mm -hmm. I, it's changed a lot. Like I used to, oh my God, my God, like the consumption, the whatever. And you have to, it's an oiled yeah, machine. Yeah, like, totally. you know, oiled, oiled up, oiled it's oiled it. up as fuck, like served <laughs> on a platter because that <laughs> ass, that ass. No, because hella. like it honestly, to even start social media, it costs the amount of money they're paying you. It costs to keep going. Mm. is the real fucking tea like and we could literally do a whole ass episode you, i could Honestly, do a whole ass episode and like we should because but it's true like because here's the thing too when when it comes to like becoming an influencer and why like it's such a rare rose when you see someone come up like naturally like mm -hmm. like ass fat slim thick no tummy no tummy <laughs> because no i'm serious because you know like uh, the reason why a lot of influencers get to like do what they do is because like they have the foundation to do it. And what mm. I mean by that is for those of people who like don't really know how it works, just payment wise. Yeah. Just for an example, like you get paid, let's say you get paid like $5,000 for like a video mm -hmm. or something. Well, it takes like 60, 30 to 60 days to get paid. Mm -hmm. So when you're first starting out, either you need better. to like literally hit that grind, mm -hmm. which work another job, which, okay, when you're working another job, you're not working another job. Yeah. It's really rare for people. You know what I mean? Yeah. People do it all the time. I get it. I'm not saying like, oh, you can only do like social, but I'm just saying like, a lot of people when they first start out, like, you know, these girls in college or whatever, or like people who have family who like they have a house to stay in, they don't have to mm -hmm. worry about rent, they don't have to worry about bills. Like they can just kind of naturally like since they're not worrying about money, they can just like naturally afford these things yeah, or like sure. whatever until like their career kind of like starts blossoming and then sure. they be able to do that. But like it takes like you kind of have to have to have money. Mm hmm to be able to do this job no that and, totally makes and sense, like yeah. so that's why when someone like comes up the cut like natural as fuck like loving ass fat slim thick Bumping no that. tummy Bumping like that. i'm just like <laughs> get them to the front because i'm just like i know what that takes to like do no, that shit real. because it's expensive as fuck to be an influencer to be that's honest tea. no i was gonna say though you and sav should run an episode because obviously like you are very much in it, been it, like kin it, yeah. tin it. And then Sav, I feel like has the experience of like being on the back end. Like even when we were doing our Patreon episode together, we were kind of just like talking about, you know, like asking her about like what she does and like how that's like, I'm like, that's fucking tea. Like, no. And that's the thing too, is there's like Sav really like she, you know, she's so presents herself very like, she's just Sav, she's very just, understated, <laughs> right, very that. understated, very, very just, demure, Sav, very mindful, very, yes. very that. But like, she's a fucking beast. Like what? I she, can believe, bitch, she's literally came in here and like Mario fucking one up no, point, like Savvy telling no. me stuff that I'm like, did y'all notice Wait, that? what the fuck? Yes. Like, girl, I didn't know. That's what I mean. Like, she's a fucking beast. Like, and that's why, I don't know, like kind of going back to like what originally we were like talking about when this episode like first started, mm. if y'all can understand Simlish. Um, no, I'm like, if you've made it this far, <laughs> like, yeah. Um, but it's so true. It's like aligning yourself with people who like get the vision, people who would be yeah. disciplined enough to like, oh, maybe like TikTok's like sucking the joy out of my life. Yeah. Or like, you know what I mean? Like, I think like when you align yourself with people who like understand like where you want to go and what you want to do. Yeah. Like that's that real shit. Like well, I, obviously, huh? Yeah. I'm like, hey, <laughs> but it's, it's so true because I, I told Maya, you know, when we first started yeah. and I saw this in your Vogue episode, Yeah, you were saying how, um, someone asked like how to have like a pop in podcast or something oh, yeah, like that. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And you were just like consistency. That's what you told but, me. But it's so true. Like I remember when I first started the show, and now I'm just getting sentimental as well. No, and that's real. I'm we just can do like it. thankful. Let's do it. But I just remember like meeting Maya and being like, "Oh, this bitch, like she be grinding, grinding, grinding <laughs> up, up in the, the club." club. Like, <laughs> Like you work so hard for your art, period. And yeah. I just knew that like when we did this show, because yes, it's a fucking key, it's fun, but like yeah. it's work and like Yeah, totally. You know, whatever. And I think like you like taking this for real has just been like what's made this show like for real. Dude. You know yeah, what I mean? No, so yeah. 
We're thankful. We're thankful, you, you guys. That. I'm I mean, thankful. And I'm thankful too because it's like, like you were saying, like aligning yourself with the right people. Like, obviously, not, I don't know why I've been saying obviously so much, girl. That shit ain't obvious. But obviously, when we started, I really appreciate that you genuinely, like, the one thing that you always said to me was consistency. Like, you never were like, you're gonna have to be funny or like, you're gonna have to, like, you no. need to start a fucking TikTok and like show whole, like, you were never saying no. anything like that. And I appreciate that though, because like, you know, now it feels very comfortable. Now it makes so much sense. Like now it feels very aligned, but like as like literally girl who was dead ass, like Vincent Van Gogh, like came to you one ear bleeding. Like I, I, it was like a kind of a further jump to make than, you know, maybe it would be for the next person. But I am really grateful that we've just been able to show up just like hell authentic. And even, even in some of the times that you're literally like, girl, and if we like wore red gloves on this episode, like we could win the lottery and I'd be like, but I don't like red. Like, I don't like red. Like you've always had that like patience with me and like, yeah, just, I'm really grateful now. Cause obviously it's, it's going so well. And like, yeah. we have such a nice community. It's homies, but like, it, it kind of sounds weird to say, but we never really were necessarily like, pushing for that like and we were no, never and that's the thing too like I think like us taking the pressure off because I used to be with a network where like it mm. was that like it was the pencil pushing it was literally like go what are your numbers mm -hmm. what are they mm -hmm. quick you're, pull, your, <laughs> pull your pants down you're getting spanked like no. you know what I mean like <laughs> yeah. and yeah. I felt like in that environment I really just did not thrive because I felt like I wasn't good enough if my numbers were like whatever yeah and like I was like, fuck the numbers. Let's just fucking key. Let's key. Like, yeah, for real. And I think that like, that's what's made this so special is the fact that like, I just knew that I was like, we don't even need, fuck that shit. Like there's literally 15 year olds who like just set up the, set up a fucking streaming mic on Twitch and like run that shit. No, run that shit nasty. Cause I'm like, and that's what all we needed to point? do. I yeah, was like, like what? I was like, keep keep our children fed. No, we good. And let's fucking keep. But yeah. like, yeah, no, it's it's crazy because I feel like I, I think it goes back to even what we were saying about social media. Like it turns into that quickly. Like that's yeah. why you see people doing crazy shit on crazy fucking shit. Graham, like getting canceled on some crazy shit because like that that um that pressure, that anxiety of over outperforming what you just performed yeah and like that's the thing with us is it's never been about the performance like yeah and it's it's, it's just not. about a, like little you know little tweaks here and there to keep business yeah. booming but yeah like, but even like the tweaks that we're making like are so like they're not, sad they're, like, yeah and they're not even surrounded in like our numbers like yeah we, i don't fucking even know Dude, what our numbers are really like sav that. came in this bitch and was like yo do you guys want like a timer and do you want to show up on time i was like yes yes we want <laughs> like that. i think all of these things like are just so curated around being fucking authentico and i i'm also oh god and here we go because y'all know when i read a book it becomes my new personality but i currently started um bell hooks has a book uh on visual politics called art on the mind and i think like before the pod in everything i've ever done like as i gain consciousness literally i'm like i think so much of this sorry guys did you guys know we're pock like i don't know like being like women of color and like being black people in this fucking country it's like <laughs> Sometimes I hear myself talking. I'm like, right. where are we going to go? Like, buckle up. I'll keep this one short. Um, but I was just going to say, I think like a lot of things, even before the pod and all this stuff comes down for me, at least to like being at least conscious of the ways that uh, things are like kind of colonized. And like you're saying, like they're a very well-oiled machine. Like there's a lot of ways we could have done this that would have been quote unquote, like recipes for success like if you guys want numbers like we could have been on here like exposing fucking like whatever like yeah. we could have done so or many we could have been like you know guest guest centric yeah like, like hella, just things to be which isn't bad at all I'm yeah not saying. no which isn't tea but i think for me like a huge part of staying authentic and like anything that i'm doing and right now again like chromacopia literally knocked my fucking brain open and brought me back tyler i owe you money is like again just kind of the constant check-in of like okay how what part of what I'm doing is stuff that's like given to me, not things that I've thought about. You know yeah. what I mean? Of like, yeah, I'll put this, I'll take this out of the podcast concept and like put it into like photography, for example. It's like, I spent, so when I got here and I was grinding, grinding, gr like I was literally like, yeah, dude, I shoot, yeah, I can shoot like ping pong balls. Like, yeah, I can shoot whatever because all of these things were like, this is, if you want to be successful, if you want to sell, like people need to see that you can do this and do this and do this. So I'm literally sitting here shooting fucking golf clubs on, on a Saturday just so I can be like, 
sellable. So then I'm more like valuable, you know what I mean? And like, arguably, yes, that is like, you know, something that would make a quote unquote stronger portfolio. But all of these things again, mama, that's Christopher Columba. Like I'm literally like all of these things again, it's like peel it the fuck back, decolonize the way that I'm thinking, or just be like mindful of like what I'm thinking and like what I think is success and all this shit. And I'm like, girl, I don't want to fucking shoot golf clubs. I don't want to shoot ping pong bow. I don't <laughs> want to shoot ping pong bow. <laughs> like I just want to shoot shit I want to shoot. And I have to trust that like yeah. what comes from that is going to be like more fucking fulfilling. I think it's the yeah. same thing here. It's like, bro. Yeah. The integrity. <laughs> integrity. It's, integrity. It's integrity. integrity. It's integrity to your art. It's integrity to who you are as a person. And I feel like when you feel your integrity failing you, as an like as a person as an artist like if you're not even proud enough to call yourself an artist like right. you know what I mean and like that's a thing yeah. too like I get that like I feel like I was definitely on that train too I'm like yeah I'll sell you guys hot cheetos like, yeah because it's easy <laughs> dude it's so easy to get it's there when so, we're yeah. literally in capitalism bitch and like, when you're damn. in capitalism and like they're literally like do you want ten thousand dollars to sell hot cheetos I'm, I'm like, like I love hot cheetos and I'll yes. literally like put them between my toes and post a picture no, on story literally, like, like literally Exactly. You know? So, so that's the thing. And it's like, I don't, I don't hate any, like no hate, it's no blameless. shame. It's no, blameless. It's very blameless because the problem's not the problem. It's symptoms of the problem. You can't like, hate the player. You can't hate the player. You gotta hate it's, the game. It's on the game. So whatever, but. <laughs> All that to say, <laughs> we're so bad. Literally like, we're, well, what? What did you guys think was going to happen? I know. I don't know what, let me look at my, because I'm Actually, like, Actually, well, I want to share a really. Share. I want to share a story. This is crazy. This is just on some like synchronicities of like everything that's been happening Totes boats, in the world. Sure. So um, w my mom and I, we were walking into Target. This is just crazy. This is just like a crazy kind of story. Yeah. We're walking into Target and this guy comes up to us, normal looking dude, like for sure, like family of foe, like just normal ass white dude. Yeah. Comes out to us and he's like, Hey, like, just just a reminder, like, don't forget, it's going to rain tomorrow. And it's just going to rain the next two days. And also, you're not in North Carolina and you're not in North Carolina anymore. So just don't forget that. And for context, we had my dad's funeral in North Carolina. So I was there for a week and I have a screenshot. Like, I'll literally post a screenshot. It was like completely sunny and um, he walked away. Like, that's all he said to us. And at first I was like, oh, okay. Like, yeah. And then my mom was like, oh, like, do you know him? And I was like, I, like, actually, no, like, I don't. And I was like, also, how did he know we were in North Carolina? And my mom was like, wait, like, go, for, like, let's go talk to him. Like, that, like, that's crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. And he was already gone. And then the next two days, it rained. It literally rained for two days. And that was it. And then it literally went back to being like a hundred and fucking 10 degrees. And it was like 72, like nice as fuck, like raining as fuck. And I just like, even when you told me that I, I genuinely don't even know where to put that. Yeah. I'm like, so I don't know. Everyday angels walking by you. No, literally though on some real. That's what Maya and I are. Like he was channeling seriously. He was channeling crazy, but I was like, okay well can you oh that's so and i'm just i was gonna make oh. a horrible no but i was a like, horrible joke oh but i'm like if that was an angel i'm like can you tell my dad and liam i say hi hella well what i was gonna say is it's just so crazy to think that like that's what he said to you and you were saying your dad was so like well and just so you know like whatever mm -hmm. it's like dude crazy as fuck i'm not saying anything but like whoa. but saying something i'm like okay Okay, well... No, and I'm like, shout out my king. Shout out my king. But yeah, no, we've just been coping with humor this whole time, Boots. And my mom made like... You said you wanted to say it on the podcast. It's hilarious. So you can if you want. It's hilarious, guys. It's actually really funny. It's actually the perfect description of what we've been doing to overcome such a tragic loss. So I find out, you know, this is day one. The joke started day one. Like, they started D-Day. <sighs> And, um, my mom called me and she was just like, you know, we were just like talking through things like my flight and stuff. And she was like, your dad kept saying, which is true before he died. Like he was like, he had said his whole life. He's like, before I die, like, I just want to go to my high school reunion. That's it. That's all I want to do before I die. If I die, I would literally die happy. Okay. Be careful how you manifest things because Ooh. not too much. But my mom was like, he kept saying like, this is my once in a lifetime trip. This is my once in a lifetime trip. Yeah. It was your once in a lifetime trip. Savage. 
Savage. No. Savage. She's real though. She's literally like, I just like. <laughs> she's real though. <laughs> she's real though. She was like, I just like can't believe he left me. Like he doesn't care. But I'm like, uh, uh, uh you're No, real. it was me talking about Quinn on the phone. She's like, I'm just, when I come out there, we're just going to SK Donuts. I was like, girl, whatever you no, want. No, that's what I'm saying. Like my I'm like, mom, I'll rent that hoe out. I don't care. No, I'll literally rent that hoe out. Like my mom is just like. I'm just realizing I'm her. No, I was going to say you're literally your mama's daughter, babe. Like, like, I'm, my mama, I'm my mama's daughter in a fearful fucking way. Like, <laughs> we literally be laughing at the exact same shit, bro. Well, we love her. She's like, an icon. I love her. Like, She's we'll, an icon. We see some shit and we just look at each other, bust out laughing. Like, that's my that's my diva for real, but. We're loving her. Sorry, I had a timer on my phone because I literally parked in the two hour. That's not real. The two hour over there. That's alleged. fake. I parked over there too. Oh, you did? Yeah. Across the street? Like down there? Yeah. Yeah, that's fake, bro. Oh, here we fucking go. Fake, 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 huh? <laughs> we'll see, fake. bitch. Because if I got a ticket, I'm going to be like, oh my God, also, I oh, wow, we have so much to catch. I need to pay a ticket currently. Also, I, I just got a new like credit three. card. Oh. I just got a new credit card, and when we are, when we are young, tickets go on sale tomorrow. Okay. Charge um, it to the game. Charge it to the game, I fear. But and, oh my God. They literally be like, your hedges suck. I'm like, okay, well. They're whacking weeds. Oh my God. I also saw um, Memoir of a Snail, which is this movie yesterday. It's making me think about it. There was a guy in there who had a. Okay. At this point, it's giving cut it. Like at this point, I'm like, I'm just saying shit on my head. Like literally, no shame. All right. We love you guys. <laughs> like for real. Do you have anything on your neighborhood, Walsh? Yes. I feel by the Sundays. T. That's my fucking T. Loving that. Bumping like, that's that. my fucking bumping that. Like, bumping y'all that. don't even have that shit at karaoke because I feel <laughs> okay. by. Like, y'all literally about to be sick as hell. <laughs> bumping that. Um, on my neighborhood watch, I'm going to say Memoirs of a Snail. That movie was really, really beautiful and gorge. Um, kind of sad, though. It was a pretty, like, I oh. cried, like, the whole time. But I can't. Um, You'll watch that, but you won't watch Didi. Watch DD. Well, okay, I have tea with Memoir of a s- 30 seconds, put it on the clock. My tea with Memoir of a Snail is it's like this stop motion animation movie. And when I was a kid, I used to watch this movie called Mary and Max, which was like another stop motion animation. Cause y'all know I I love an unsettling stop motion. Like as a kid, I literally was like, <laughs> but anyway, so I like watched that. I know y'all can hear that and I'm so sorry. We're, we're wrapping up, we're wrapping up. Um, I watched that when I was a kid and I, <laughs> I didn't know what it was called. I just remember I saw it and it like hella hit me and I was like, whatever. Anyways, oh my God. Me like, and then, and then, uh, and then I, um, and then didn't know what it was called, found out what it was called later, whatever, which is like a deep cut in my childhood. And then when we were at the movies like a couple months ago or something, I saw the fucking preview for this movie, which is the same guy, the same mm. stop motion. And I literally was like, I have to see this. Like, you know. Mary and Max or whatever, like not Mary and Max. Those the, the, those are those bunnies, huh? Oh, it was Max Marianne and something. Ruby. Max and Ruby. I think maybe it was called Mary and Max, but but period. Anyway, all right. Okay, guys. Well, since we're literally about to get sucked Kicked in out. by this fucking, like, <laughs> we're literally about to get our hedges trimmed. Next. <laughs> no, I'm like, no. Okay, ah, we gotta go. We gotta go. Yeah. We gotta go. Um, love you guys so much, and we'll see you here next week. It's good to be back, man. We'll see y'all next week. Hey, hey bye. <laughs>